So here we are at Good Friday. It's an important day for all Christians for hundreds of years. Christians have gathered on Good Friday and we have done this because this is the day we remember the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That event that is just so central to our faith. And it makes sense that we would set aside a special day for this. I think it's safe to say that most people probably know this. Even those who do not consider themselves Christians would probably know that this is what Christians remember on this day. What might not be so clear to those looking in and even to some who are followers of Jesus is why on earth is it called Good Friday? Why would we call this day Good Friday? What, what is good about it? And I think that's a really good question. If you think about the Friday in question, the original Friday that we remember each year, it's easy to see why this might seem like a strange name for this day. It seems like this day was anything but good. Think with me for a moment about what happened on that day. Jesus began that day in a dark cell. The day before, he had been betrayed by his friends and arrested and taken before the Jewish leaders to face the accusations by them, accusations designed to force a death sentence upon him. In uh, Matthew's account, he says this, it, his account begins this way, Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. So then he is bound and taken to Pilate, who is the Roman governor. He was the only one who had the authority to carry out a death sentence at that time. So Pilate finds himself in the company of Jesus, he, he speaks to him and he actually finds Jesus innocent. But because he is a political coward, he takes a decision to hand the decision back to the Jews. It had uh, become tradition, come crucifixion day, to release one prisoner chosen by the crowd. So he gives them the choice and he asks them if they want to uh, release Jesus or the notorious prisoner called Barabbas. The crowd call for Barabbas to be released. There was nothing good about this. Matthew records in his, in his gospel, he says, What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him! Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! What could be good about this? But then it gets worse. Because Pilate listens to them and he hands Jesus over to the soldiers whose job it was to handle executions. Now, I could tell you what happened next, but I can't do a better job than Matthew. So allow me to read to you his account. It's found in Matthew chapter 27, and I'll begin reading from verse 27. It says this, Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said, and they spit on him. And they took, a, took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and, and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. 
Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. He's king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From the sixth hour till the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine, vinegar, and put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up. His spirit. This is the most brutal of days. What could be good about this Friday? Now, if all we do is look at what happened to Jesus on this day, then we would all agree that there was nothing good about this day at all. But if you look at what Jesus did on this day and why he did it, you will see why it is still right to call it Good Friday. Let me explain. You see, what happened on that day was the greatest expression of love the world will ever see. And here's why. Jesus was not a victim on that day. Though the betrayal and the mock trial were real and and he, he really did suffer at the hand of Roman thugs. And he endured the agony of death by crucifixion. He was fully in control all the time. Earlier, he had said to his followers things like this. He said in John chapter 10, The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Later on he said, Now my heart is troubled and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. He even spelled out in advance to his followers what would happen. Matthew records in his gospel in verse chapter 20 verse 17 he says now as jesus was going up to jerusalem he took the 12 disciples aside and said to them we're going up to jerusalem and the son of man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law they will condemn him to death and will turn him over to the gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified on the third day he'll be raised to life Read any of the eyewitness accounts of the life of Jesus and this one thing is clear. That he not only knew what was going to happen to him, but that he chose to go through it on his own accord. And, and we must ask why. How, how was that a good thing? Well, it was a good thing because of what he did for us by doing that. What he went through on that day was considered by God as full payment for our sin. In that act, he was dying in our place. The penalty of our sin that our sin deserved was placed on him instead of us. This was a willful act of love. John put it this way, he said, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. He also said this, this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. He was an atoning sacrifice for our sins. In other words, he died instead of us. He died in our place. 
so that we could be released, forgiven, and reconciled to God. I like the way the Apostle Paul put it. He, he, he said this in Romans chapter 5. He said in verse 6, You see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is why this was a good day. A good Friday. Not because of what was done to Jesus, but because of what he did for us. It was a good day because on this day the greatest act of love the world would ever witness was carried out. And it was an act of love for you and for me. Let me encourage you to take some time right after watching this and uh, maybe a bit later in the day and set some time aside and read John's account of this day. You can find it in John chapter 18 and 19. Read it and then thank God for loving you so much that he would send his son to experience this for you on your behalf. Why don't I pray? Father, I want to thank you for your love. Your expression of love. And your expression of love that was directed at us. Greatest act of love the world will ever see. The perfect, sinless, eternal Son of God. Suffering and dying. In my place. In our place. So that the penalty and the payment of our sin might be made. And we could be forgiven. And reconciled to you, our loving Heavenly Father. So we want to give you thanks for that Friday and for this Friday. It's a good Friday. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.